Hello everyone. Today we are talking about the light. Like that, how light spectrum was discovered. For example, how X-rays are discovered, gamma rays, visible light, ultraviolet light, infrared light, and microwave, etc. The advancement in this world is impossible without the electromagnetic radiations because if you see around the world then there is a very important role of electromagnetic waves in different kinds of fields for example in the field of astronomy in the field of optics in the field of medicine or if you see this whole world is becomes a global village because of the electromagnetic waves or even if you see in the field of electronics in the field of medicine such as the mri ct scan x-rays ultraviolet radiations etc are play a very important role in different fields so let us now dis uh, discuss who are basically the main scientists who discovered these different kind of uh, electromagnetic waves so now let to answer that question discuss the role of different scientists in the discoveries of the different electromagnetic waves of the electromagnetic spectrum. The first one role, which is a very prominent role, is basically of Sir Isaac Newton. In 1666, Sir Isaac Newton investigated that when sunlight is passes through a prism, it disperses into seven colors. At that time, he observed only six colors, but for a correct measurement, he placed the seven one color as a violet. After that, Scientists believe that now we are entering in a modern regime and we are able to discover some more interesting facts about the nature of life. But uh, after that, around about 100 years, no one can further search, search that uh, what is basically behind uh, to the left and right of uh, the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum because this visible part is only uh, we can see. So the question arises whether there is any other kind of life which is cannot be seen through. Uh, human eye. For that, in 1801, William Herschel, uh, around about 1800, William Herschel comes and uh, he placed a thermometer near the red part of the electromagnetic spectrum and he observed that uh, the temperature of the thermometer rises or the thermometer gives higher reading, even there is uh, no radiations are seen through net eye. So he named that strange type of radiation who heat up the thermometer as the infrared radiations. After that, in 1801, John Ritter comes and uh, he take a photographic plate and uh, wrap around that photographic plate of silver chloride and place that silver chloride near violet part of the electromagnetic visible spectrum. He observed that uh, beyond violet light, uh, the photographic plate of silver chloride get reacted although that radiations are unobservable to our eyes so for that whose energy is more or more energetic radiation than the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum he named that as ultraviolet or uv radiation and sun is one of the major source of the ultraviolet radiation after that Another famous scientist, Thomas Young, comes in 1801 and his famous, and he performed his famous Young's double slit experiment. Through his experiment, he investigated that the, basically the light becomes get refracted, uh, diffracted and produce an interference pattern on the screen. During his experiment, he measured the wavelength of light and uh, observed that uh, the light produce an interference spectrum and uh, basically on the screen we observe the maximas and minima produce uh, certain dark and bright fringes. After that, in 1885, uh, Frank Hartz come who basically experimentally verified the theoretical prediction of uh, Maxwell electromagnetic theory. 
because like we will theoretically predict that uh, light has a speed of 3 cross 10 power 8 meter per second and uh, that one is experimentally verified by the prime Hertz and he measure experimentally the speed of light as a 3 cross 10 power 8 meter per second and during his experiment he investigated that uh, basically if we take uh, a transmitter consists of uh, induction coils uh, connected with a uh, metallic spares uh, and uh, by supplying uh, fluctuating voltage to that uh, he, he observed that uh, there is a pro produce a spark in the gap in the gap of the two spares and at the same time he take another device as a receiver which consists of a circular ring uh, connected to a two small spare and there is a small gap during his experiment he observed that uh, when the spark produce at the transmitter and there is also produce at the same time spark at the receiver end uh, so from that he concluded that there are uh, some unseen things that are waves that are propagating in space uh, from the transmitter towards the receiver although there is uh, no physical contact between the two devices so then after that uh, he measured the wavelength of that radiation by moving the receiver back and forth and measure uh, the wavelength of that radiation which are later called uh, radio waves after that Ryan come in 1895 and he discovered x-rays which are basically an unknown radiation at that time because during his experiment, when he performed his experiment in an X-ray low, low pressure air tube in his experiment, basically he taken a tungsten filament as a cathode and a high metal target and applying a, a several hundred kilovolt voltage during his experiment, he observed that when the trial accelerated towards anode and uh, get stopped by the anode, a certain strange radiations are emitted which cannot be stopped by an ordinary barrier and cannot be directed. So for that reason no, no one could be able to stop that radiation or to investigate about how these rays can be directed. So after that it is a big challenge that how these rays can be stopped or how these rays can be uh, directed. For that in 1912 Max von Lau come and uh, he performed experimentally that how x-rays can be directed for that he take an, a crystal and pass x-rays through that crystal during his experiment he observed that uh, x-rays are get directed by the crystal because the interatomic spacing in the crystal structure is at the order of the wavelength of the x-rays which are at the order of the angstrom one angstrom or uh, one nanometer roundabout so from there to the experiment he verified the diffraction effect produced by the x-rays and then after that the x-rays are played a very important role in medicine and crystallography through which we can investigate crystal structure or and it is also used in industry in medicine to investigate the crack bone etc so x-rays are now become a very key electromagnetic wave which play a very important role in different fields after that Gamma rays are discovered, which are basically discovered as a contribution of the four main famous scientists, and their famous scientists Henry Becquerel, Mary Curie, Willard, and Rutherford are included. Rutherford basically investigated about the electromagnetic nature of the gamma rays. For Willard, basically investigate, inv investigated that or basically electromagnetic isotope emit a certain kind of radiations, which are basically. Uh, certain kind of particle and radiation which are basically alpha, beta and uh, gamma rays. So basically Paul Weller investigate about the nature of the electromagnetic uh, about the nature of the radioactive yeah. element. That it uh, radioactive certain electromagnetic uh, electro uh, radioactive element uh, emit uh, alpha, beta and gamma rays. Similarly Mary Curie basically isolate uh, radium and uh, Henry Becquerel basically discover radioactivity. So gamma rays is basically contribution of four scientists. After that, the discovery of microwaves was very strange. And microwaves was discovered basically in you know, World War II. At that time, uh, British scientists uh, feel the need of uh, that how we can uh, develop a radar that can uh, that can uh, or uh, investigate about the or uh, can find the direction of the incoming aeroplane of the enemy like uh, for example at that time Germans was his enemy so he investigated about the German aircraft that uh, how German aircraft can be detected so far that he developed uh, a radar which basically emit microwaves 
but the exact nature of uh, about further investigation uh, about the microwaves was uh, very interesting. When in 1945, uh, uh, Percy Spencer basically observed that uh, there is a, a chocolate in his pocket, and uh, he observed that there are uh, certain radiations coming from radar, and uh, the chocolate in their pocket is get heated or melted. So from there, uh, he concluded that uh, these microwaves are basically able to heat up something and uh, then after that uh, the discovery of uh, microwave oven is possible which is not a, a very important tool in our homes and uh, with the help of which we can cook uh, different types of uh, food so basically these different kinds of radiation play a very important role in our life i hope all of you learn some basic things about the discovery of the electromagnetic spectrum and this is basically that electromagnetic spectrum first the visible part is discovered after that infrared is covered visible part basically from 4 to 700 nanometer infrared is greater than 700 nanometer wavelength radiation while microwaves are basically at the order of centimeter or millimeter range of electromagnetic radiation while radio waves wavelength is basically from 10 to 100 kilometer consistent uh, its wavelength. Ultraviolet radiations are uh, very energetic compared to visible infrared micro or radio waves. Its wavelength is uh, around about uh, 10 to 100 nanometer while X-ray uh, wavelength is uh, 1 nanometer or less than 1 nanometer. It consists of its uh, wavelength. Similarly, gamma rays are the most intense and uh, high energetic radiation compared to all of other electromagnetic waves. And its wavelength is uh, less than 10 power minus 2 nanometer. So I hope all of you learned some basic things. Thank you for your time and until next time we will appear with the next interesting lecture.